Okay, let's start off with running. You guys know the drill. And then punches. Keep your feet moving. I don't care what punches you do. I do jab, cross, hook, uppercut just because it makes sense to my brain from a warm up point of view. <clears throat> but as long as your hands are up and your feet are moving, I don't really care what punches you do. Okay, then feet, you're here. Step out and in. Something back there is squeaking. knees. Now when you do this, think about keeping this one bent. It helps you keep your balance and it puts more stress on that leg so you're doing more work. Other side. ladder steps. So visualize a ladder or if you have an agility ladder and you want to put it on the floor, but you're stepping through the rungs and then picking your knee up. So you got to pick your knees up. Even if you have a flat, like a agility, my agility ladder is plastic slats with a, like a, not a cord, but it's flat, just a flat rope. And if you don't pick your feet up, you get them caught. Kicks, front, side, back. And if you get your feet caught and you screw the rope up, then you have to do more because you don't get to cut your time down because you messed up the ladder. Okay, so what you need to do now is you need to turn the video off and start the music playing. And while the music is playing, you're going to do two more rounds. 30 seconds each, running, punches, in and out steps, knees, ladder steps, kicks. Two times through, 30 seconds each. Now when you're done, turn the video back on and come back to me to stretch. So to stretch, reach up. Over to one side. Other side. Put your hands here. Clasp your fingers together. Push your shoulders back. And lift your hands. And then reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Now with your feet here, relatively close together, turn, I have both heels on the floor, my knees are straight, pull your chin down, your chest down to your front knee. Normally we do this stretch much more extended, but with your feet close together, you get more of a stretch in your hamstring. Make sure you keep your chin up. Then push back and stretch your hip flexor. Mid center, toes straight forward, knees out. Grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. So chin is up, then turn your feet, keep the knees straight, keep your chin up, chest down towards the front knee. Push back, stretch your hip flexor. 
Then have a seat. Put your bottoms of your feet together. And then take your hands and tuck them right up against your back here so that you're not end up, you don't want to scrunch your back like this. I actually, my feet are sliding, so I'm going to put them against the, chair, the table and then put my hands here to keep my back straight. Now the sun is in my eyes, so they're closed and push your knees down. And then you have to put your feet out, come over to one side. So what I'm doing here is my ribs are coming down towards my thigh, They're coming to the side. Then you're going to come up and you're going to turn the front of your chest towards your knee and reach out and grab again. And same thing on the other side. Turn towards your knee. Now we're going to reach to the center and when you do this, I don't want you to do this. Okay, I want you to lift your chin and push your chest forward so your back is flat and reach your elbows toward the floor. Okay, if you've got that and it's easy, pull your feet in closer and still reach your elbows to the floor. And then if you need more, put your feet together and put your elbows on the floor on the outside. And pull your feet in. Heels are on the floor. Rock back and forth. Okay, this is easier. Feet apart, knees apart. Toes pointed straight forward, feet closer together is harder. Put your hands down. Straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, three exercises. Um, I'm going to show them to you. And then again, I want you to stop the video, turn the music on, and do each one of them for a minute. Okay, the first one, I'm going to, I think you can see me okay. The first one are inchworm push ups. So you do the inchworm push ups. You start here, you bend down, you put your hands on the floor, you walk them out to the plank. You do a push up. You walk them back in, you stand all the way up. Walk them down. Okay, you can do them on your knees if you want. In either case, your back has to be flat and your chin has to be up. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is toe touch sit-ups. <clears throat> so you're gonna start here on your back. I'm straight out. I'm gonna come up. My right hand is gonna touch my left foot. Then my left hand touches my right foot. So opposite foot down. Okay, and the third one is a lunge front kick. So what I want you to do is I want you to step back to the lunge and then ideally right from here up to the front kick and back down on the same side. So ideally your foot is only touching in the back. Okay, if that doesn't work for you, here, 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 and down. Okay, so like I said, stop the video, turn the music on, a minute each, into our push-ups, toe touch sit-ups, and lunge front kick. Okay, so this month we're working on accuracy. So we're gonna work on some techniques. We're gonna work on proper body positioning for those techniques. Um, being sure that you're hitting the target with the right part of your body. And then we're also going to put some targets there to hit. So we're gonna start off with a jab. Okay, a jab comes straight out from your shoulder. Okay, your, your, your wrist needs to be straight. If you're angled in any direction, you're gonna hurt your wrist. You wanna hit with these first two knuckles. And then, so I'm starting my fighting stance, uh, guard stance, I guess you could call it. And I'm going to punch straight out from the front. Okay, as I do that, I'm rotating this hip a little bit on the, t so my front hip, on the toe of my front foot. And I'm also, as I do it, I'm pulling this shoulder up a little bit. So this hand is up covering this side of my face, but because this arm is extended, this side of my face isn't covered. But by bringing my shoulder up, I've at least covered my neck and the bottom of my face. So let's do 10 on each side. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the other side, if this is your dumb side, you're going to find this doesn't work quite as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're going to do a cross. So, um, jab is your front hand, cross is your back hand. I'm doing it with my hands here. You can do it with your hand this way too, whichever one suits your brain. Mine wants to go this way. Okay, but especially if you're going this way, you want to make sure you have a straight line here. No up or down. That will hurt your wrist. Straight line here. You're hitting with these first two knuckles. So I'm going to do a jab cross now. So when I do my jab cross on the first one, back hand is up on the first one, like we practiced the jab. I rotate my hip, I'm rotating on the toe of the front foot, and then I'm gonna push off the floor with my back toe and rotate my body way into the cross. Okay, so I'm throwing both of these at a height of the face, throat or nose, or someone who's the same height as I am. So let's do 10 sets on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the other side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I'm going to add a hook punch. Okay, hook punch does not do this. A hook punch, whether you throw it from your front hand or your back hand, in this case, we're gonna throw it from our front hand. All I'm doing is leaving my hand right where it is. This is a close-in technique. I just bring my elbow up and I rotate my hip. So it's just coming up and around. It's the hip rotation that drives this. So if I was doing front hand, back hand, it's front hand, back hand. And from this angle, you can see I'm not swinging my hands. I just lift my elbow, rotate my hips, lift my elbow, rotate my hips. So we're gonna add that to the jab cross that we did. So we're gonna go jab, so you're rotating your front foot, front hip on the jab, other hand is covering your face. Pull that hand in, rotate to the cross, pull it back, lift the elbow, rotate to the hook. So I'm not going jab, cross, hook. Here, right about here is a good place to get hit in the head. I'm going jab, cross, hook. Okay, so let's do 10 sets on each side like we did with the other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now we're gonna do a back leg round toss kick. We spent a lot of time working on kicks last week. What I want you to think about when you do your back leg round toss kick is I'm gonna chamber. Initially, I can start with the front kick chamber and then I'm gonna rotate to the round kick chamber. Okay, so now, so I'm starting with my knee up, keeping my knee facing my target and kicking. Okay, so I'm gonna do some of these traveling forward. One, I can't get 10 in before I run into the camera. Two, three, and then I'll go back the other way. One, two, three. Okay, then we're gonna add that to the combo. So jab, cross, hook, back leg round toes kick. And we're gonna do it traveling. So we'll start here uh, in your left guard stance. Jab, cross, hook, keep your hands up. Back leg round toes kick. Jab, cross, hook, back leg round. Jab, cross, hook, back leg round. And going back the other way. Jab, cross, hook, back leg round. Jab, cross, hook, back leg round. Okay, if you're gonna use this as a sparring technique, 
the jab and cross would happen here. You might actually step in a little bit to throw the hook and you might be more likely to throw a front leg round test kick because you're really close to the person that you're hitting. Um, unless they step back. If you throw the jab, the cross, you chase them down, you throw the hook, they step back further, then the round test kick makes, the back leg round test kick makes sense. So there's two things that I want you to do here. I want you to find a partner and I want you to have them hold out a target for you. Okay, if you have a focus pad in your house that's ideal, otherwise a small pillow or a piece of paper, and I want you to draw an X in the middle of it. So then you're going to, your partner's gonna hold like this for the jab cross, and then like this for the, the, uh, hook, the hook punch, and the other side of it for the roundhouse kick. So they're gonna hold here and then here. So jab, cross, hook, roundhouse kick. I want you to do that with your partner. And then the other thing that I want you to do is I want you to put a partner there. Don't actually hit them. You might want to do this open hand in case your control is not what you would like it to be. And I want you to throw a jab. Figure out on, your, on the person where your target's going to be. Throw the cross. Figure out where the target's going to be. Throw the hook. Figure out where your target's going to be. Figure out if you need to step back or have them step back every time you throw the punch and figure out where your distancing is to make a way to make that rear leg roundhouse kick make sense. Okay, two open hand forms of cycle. For advanced karate kids, your form of cycle is the bow form. So you have you don't have a new open hand form of cycle. So we're gonna run through the beginner open hand form or the first half of the beginner open open hand form, which is action karate form four, and also the advanced the intermediate one, which is action karate form eight. First half of each one. This one we're working on accuracy. So what we're gonna do is each move we're gonna do. We're going to figure out what part of our body is hitting the target and what we're hitting. So we start here, action karate form four, and you fall back in your guard stance. So we're going to do a chop to start. Okay, so it's this side of my hand that's hitting. My fingers have to be tight closed. If they're open and I catch with my finger, it's then the side of my hand, my finger is going to get broken. The hand and my target in the side of the neck. Okay, then I'm going to rotate and punch. Make sure you rotate just like in the drills that we did. Targets for this could be nose, it could be throat, it could be solar plexus. Then I am going to spear. So I'm gonna rotate again and throw a spear. Okay, so you guys know when we do a spear, by definition, eyes, throat, ribs. So this has to be a spear to the throat. Then you're gonna grab the person's head because it's right there, you just got them in, you just hit them in the throat. You're gonna grab their head. Back leg is gonna do a crescent kick, which has a front kick chamber up, kick and then the same thing on the other side chop so this side of your hand knife hand to the side of the neck rotate punch okay make sure this hand is up when you throw the punch otherwise you're going to get hit in the head nose throat solar plexus spear to the throat grab the head axe kick not crescent kick sorry and then i'm going to step out to a front stance low block punch okay if i do my low block here i'm off balance so I'm going to start in a guard stance. These are narrow. Chop, punch, spear, kick. Chop, punch, spear, kick. Low block, punch. Okay, so I want you to do that three times. You can either do it three times and then come back to action karate form eight, or you can do this one and you can do eight and then you can do it each three times. Okay, so then we're going to do the first half of action karate form eight. Starts here. Somebody's choking you hands come up, you're dropping your elbows down on the soft part of the inside of their, el the, of their arm, break the choke. <clears throat> they grab your hand, pull the hand away, come to cup and saucer. Okay, so cup and saucer on the right means your right hand is in a fist on your hip, palm up, and your left hand is in a fist on top of it, palm down. So I was here, I'm going to come to cup and saucer and chamber my side here. So this side kick, when I'm chambered, my heel should be facing the floor and my leg should be at a 90 degree angle as if my foot was up on a box. Hands are here. When I throw the side kick, I'm going to kick, bring it back, step back to front stance facing that way so I know my stance ends up being wide enough. Turn to the front, hammer, hammer. Okay, so when you throw the hammer, you're hitting with this part of your hand, you gotta rotate your hips just as if you were throwing a punch. And what I visualize as the target here is when I hit somebody with the side kick, I double them over. So my hammer now is coming down on the back of their neck. New attacker. 
I'm gonna back away from them, throw a punch, throw another punch. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start here, kick, hammer, hammer. I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna come down as I punch. So my target here is lower, okay? It could be, it's probably solar plexus, maybe groin, maybe right above the knee. Hitting someone in the stomach is not really useful because they do sit-ups, we hope they do sit-ups. And punch. Then I'm gonna stand up, come to a front stance, and hammer down. So I'm gonna hammer down on the bridge of someone's nose, bring my hand all the way through, tuck this foot under, settle my weight as I come back up and I hit with mouth and fist, under their chin. Step back, make space, and then slide up side kick. Okay, so one more time. This isn't in the form, but I'm gonna keep the table if I do it right there. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to do each one of those forms three times. Every time, I want you to say the words out loud. What part of your body is hitting and what part of your target person are you hitting? Okay, we're gonna practice two self-defenses right now. The first one is overhead club with sword cut. And this is from the intermediate curriculum. So you learn this when you were green belt. Somebody's trying to hit you in the head with a stick. The most important thing to do is get out of the way. So if they're, we're gonna assume right now that everybody's right-handed. I know some of you aren't, but it's easier to teach when we're going on the assumption that everybody's doing the same thing. So they've got the stick in their right hand and they're attacking over the head. Your left foot is gonna step out of the way to that corner. Your hands are gonna come up and block. Your block is like this. Your right hand is closer to you and the left one is further away. You're blocking their arm, not the stick. If you block the stick, your arm is going to get broken. So you're here, I don't want any trouble. Get out of the way, block. Then you're gonna take your right hand and you're gonna reach up over the top of their hand and grab the turkey head side of their hand. Okay, so I don't want any trouble. I get out of the way, I block. Reach over the top, grab turkey butt. Then my left hand is gonna, I mean, turkey head. Left hand grabs turkey butt. Then I'm gonna come under their arm and turn their wrist over so I have a wrist lock. Okay, if you're practicing this inside the karate school, there is a throw, but um, I, I, it's hard to show you the throw when there's nobody to throw when I'm not gonna throw myself on the wooden floor, which wouldn't teach you anything anyway. But the important part of it is, the really important part is get your head out of the way. The next most important part is do some damage with the wrist lock. The throw is kind of gratuitous. So I'm gonna do it one more time in each direction. They're coming at me, I don't want any trouble. Out of the way block, make sure the right one is closer to you. Reach over the top. Take the thumb blade of their hand, which is turkey head. Other one grabs the pinky blade, which is turkey butt. Back, come under their arm and twist their wrist. Okay, so going this way, I don't want any trouble. Okay, so that's from the green belt curriculum. That's not new. Your new self-defense is star blocks out with coupeton. We talked about this last week. This is a coupeton. Okay, this is actually a very skinny little coupeton. Um, with a very sharp point on it. I like it. A lot of coupetons are not that skinny. I have some that are fatter with a point. I have some that are fatter that are completely flat here. I have a plastic one. I think my daughter has a wooden one. Um, in Massachusetts, as long as you have keys on them, they're legal. However, you still can't take them into school, into a courthouse, into an airport. You can't take them if you're going to the DCU Center for a concert. So you're still restricted. If your parents want you to have a coupon to practice with, they can get one from Mrs. McCoy. If they don't want you to have a coupon to practice with, a pen works really well, okay? A Sharpie works really well. Um, anything that shape you can use as a coupon. Okay, so what I do when I hold my coupon is I have the end with the loop and the keys close to my thumb. Sometimes I even put my thumb over that end. And then I have the other end sticking out of my hand here. So if I hit with, if I, cause if I don't put my thumb here, when I hit with it, it's gonna slide through my hand that way, which I don't want to happen. My thumb is here and I hit, and this end's gonna come up under my thumb. So this end's gonna hit the person instead of sliding into my hand. Okay, I have keys on mine, so I would use the other end as a striking weapon. 
Do not use this on your little brother or sister. Um, but beware that you can use the point, of the, the hard end of it as a pressure point weapon. Okay, so last week we worked on up, in, out. Okay, so somebody threw a, an overhead attack and you're gonna block up and then you're gonna slide their arm, catch this behind their arm and slide their arm down out of the way. Okay, we practiced that last week. Then the other one we practiced was in, out. And you might, you might go, we didn't do out, but we did. Okay, in, they're throwing a hook punch at me with this hand. I'm gonna block in, block with my arm. Then I'm gonna turn out, and I'm not using it out as a block, I'm using it as a strike. So I come here, and I can strike the side of their neck. Then I can tuck this behind their neck here and step and take them down. I can also do that in the other direction. I can go up, take them down, and then I can go out in. So if they throw a hook punch with this hand, I can block out. And then I can step in and strike the neck, still catch the neck, and take them down. Okay, the next part of star block set, you're gonna go, it's touch. Touch is really just a chamber. So we have an up block, an in block, and an out block. Touch is a chamber for down. Okay, so down, lots of things I can do with down. Okay, somebody throws a kick. I can just slam the edge of my cubiton into this anywhere soft on the inside of their leg. Okay, um, <clears throat> if, I, if they're on the other side of me, I can block, catch their arm, and slam the point of the cubiton into the side of their, into the side of their knee. Okay, so let's do it in both directions. They're going to attack me on the side that I have the cubiton in. I'm gonna step out of the way, because you know that. Somebody who tries to attack you, the thing you need to do is get out of the way. So I'm gonna step out of the way, and I'm gonna strike. If they attack me on this side, I'm gonna step out of the way, catch their arm, and strike. Okay, I'd like you to practice that with somebody in your house. I do not want you to strike hard to their legs. You can do some damage. And if you don't have a cubiton, that's fine. Use a Sharpie, use a pen. Just make sure that if you use a pen, it's, um, it's solid enough like this. I think if I hit, this is a pencil, if I hit something with this, I think it would snap. So just make sure you use something that's a little bit more solid. Sharpie is generally solid enough that it won't break. Okay, two things with the sticks. Single stick and double stick. So single stick, I'll do this facing both directions. Last week we did the first, mo most of the first. We're gonna add two more moves so that we finish the right hand. So I start here, make sure that you have a hand of distance under this hand, which gives you this end of the stick also as a weapon. So I start here, blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover my head. This is covering your head, this is not covering your head. Step forward, high, low, high. Orbit, strike. Now the, 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 bow, the stick just made a circle in this direction. I'm gonna make the circle keep going in that direction. My right foot's gonna follow it, step back, and I'm gonna cover my head again. Again, this is head covered, this is not. I'm gonna step forward and strike down. I always keep my hand up to protect my face. So if I've only got one stick, the other hand is up. Going in the other direction, blood cup, courtesy, step back, protect your head, do not hit the, the ceiling fan light. Step forward, high, low, high. Orbit, so it comes around your head. If you're looking up at a clock, it's coming around your head clockwise, like you're wiping the sweat off your forehead. Comes around, it strikes, and the stick keeps going in the same direction. Your right foot follows it, you're protecting your head again, step forward and strike down. Okay, you can practice in that air a bunch of times, and then what I want you to do is find somebody else in your house, especially if you can find somebody who doesn't teach karate. Give them your other stick. Teach them that set, and then have them practice it with you. Okay, and then um, intermediate and advanced. You guys need to get your other stick. I'm gonna do this mirror to you, and then I'll do it with my back to you, so I'm going the same way. So I'm doing it mirror, so um, what I'm, I've got, this is my, this is my left side, but I'll be saying right, because it's a mirror, so you can do it facing me. Um, you just take your left stick and put it on your left, your, so I wanna do the other side. We did that already. We did last week, we did one, two, three. So we're gonna do the other side this week. So for you, it's gonna be the left side. You're gonna take your left hand stick and put it on your left shoulder. Your right hand stick and put it on your 
your right hand stick, put it on your left wrist. Yeah, it's very confusing to do the other direction. Then I'm gonna go left, right, left. Bring it back to the right side, because eventually they're gonna go together, and then bring it back to this side. Left, right, left, and back to the left side. Left, right, left, and back to the left side. Okay, so if you're doing it with me, we start here. And it's left, right, left, back to the right, back to the left. So my left hand stick is on my left shoulder. My right hand stick is on my left wrist. Left, right, left, and back. Left, right, left, and back. Okay, honestly, I think this is the coolest of what we do four different stick sets. This is my favorite one. I think this is the coolest one. I want you to practice that. Okay, if you're going, I can't figure out where my hands are going. Play the video back, the easiest way to learn it. Well, actually, you can either way, because I'm doing it mirror. So whichever one makes more sense for your brain, but just keep doing it over and over and over. Okay, this is the advanced class bow form. So if you are in the Karate Kids class, this is your form this cycle. You don't have an open hand form. If you were in the Tung Sudo class, if you are two or one straight brown or red belt, this is your weapon, but you're also learning an open hand form. Um, so you guys are just gonna have to work hard, deal with it. Okay, so we did the beginning of this form last week. We're gonna finish the first three phrases today. I'm gonna do it in both directions. So we start here, Chibi, shut up, Kinyet. We start, bow comes up to the corner. It's in your right hand, left hand comes underneath. Grab, palm up, pull it back to your shoulder. Not on top of your shoulder, but on the outside of your shoulder. Step and strike. Turn your feet. All I'm gonna do with the bow is this. Switch your feet so you're going to the other corner. Step and strike. Now somebody's trying to hit my right leg. I'm gonna pull my right leg out of the way and take the right hand end of the bow, which is in the front, drop it down and push it across so it's outside my knee and protects my knee. Then I'm gonna bring it up and over and break the person's collarbone as I lay in the jingle chassis. Front end is on their collarbone, back end is on my left hip. I'm gonna strike them up, down, side, side. Then I'm gonna pull back to a cat stance, disarm, and strike. And the disarm, what I'm doing with the disarm is somebody's bow is coming at me, I'm putting mine in, catching their bow, circling it out of the way, so I throw it, and then stabbing them. And then I'm gonna go exactly the same thing on the other side. It's the same foot on the other side, you're not switching sides. So I look over my shoulder, my right foot tracks across, right hand bow and front end swings across, protects my right knee. Step to Trimble Chassis, break their collarbone. Up, down, it's on my left hip, side, side. Pull back to the cat stance again, disarm and step. Okay, I'll do it going the other direction too. We start here, one, left hand comes underneath, grab. Outside of your shoulder, strike. Two, turn to that corner. I'm just gonna shift my hips and take the end of the bow that's on my left hip and strike with it. Then I step and take the end that's out in the front, pull it back to my left hip. Protect the right leg. Pull into the Japanese cat stance, get it out of the way. Front end of the bow drops down. Pushes across to protect your knee. Step forward and jingle chops to your front stance. Break their collarbone. Back end of the bow is on your left hip. Up, down, side, side. Pull back to the cat stance. Disarm and step. Look over the shoulder. Swing the right foot around. Right hand end of the bow is in the front. It comes down, it swings around with your foot. Step back out to Chungle Chassis. Break their collarbone. Back end of the bow is on your left hip. Up. So you're hitting groin, collarbone, ribs, ribs. Pull back to the cat stance, disarm, and step. That's almost half, a little bit more than a third. Okay, so I want you to practice that. This is by far the hardest weapon to master because it's, well, this isn't, this isn't a screaming stick, but your bow should be ideally about your height, maybe a tiny bit. I use one a little bit shorter than me. Some people use a little bit taller, but about your height is a rule of thumb. And doing this without smacking yourself or getting caught in the bow or hitting something behind you um, makes it learning. If this is the first time you do 
bow makes learning it much harder. So if you're having trouble handling it to begin with, don't stress about it. We got plenty of time.